Hi guys, I just woke up. Sorry I sound like death. But, um, here's the Degrassi video. I fell asleep last night and forgot to film it. So, we're gonna film it this morning. Um, uh, an announcement that I made on the Naveed reaction, which will be going up today too. I am starting university, so working and going to university. I have off two days of the week, so hopefully I can film videos those two days, but I don't know. So, um, I will let you guys know. I guess if you see videos coming up, good. And if I can't make videos, I'll make a video letting you guys know. But we're on season two of Degrassi. Um, first, I'm going to read the plot of the episodes and show you how they solved it. And then I'm going to um, talk about the relationships and what I thought. So... Okay, so, the first episode was called When Doves Cry. As the new school year begins, Degrassi expands into 7th through 12th grades. Much to the chagrin of all the students, new 9th grader Craig becomes quick friends with Sean and attracts Emma and Manny, but his home life is less than perfect as he deals with an abusive father and his own growing need to be around his stepfather Joey and half-sister Angela. Meanwhile, JT makes desperate attempts to ask Paige out, but she refuses every time. She later changed her mind when she makes a bet with Hazel and Spinner. So, those are two episodes that we talked about, the first two, and as you see, it deals with child abuse. And that is something very serious that I don't think people talk about enough. And I'll show you how they solved it. Greg? Greg? What do you want? Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I just, I just want to help, okay? I'm fine! Yeah, right, look at you. What's this I hear about a train, huh? Sean told you that. Well, he's a liar. Liar! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on. Get out of here! Let, let, let's go, okay? Let's just calm down <laughs> and get out of here, okay? Where, where am I gonna go, huh? Where am I gonna go? Back, what, back home so, so dad can... What? What does he do to you? He hits you, doesn't he? Doesn't he? Yeah. He does. Do I agree with how they solved it? Yes. I always think it's best to tell a trusted adult that you trust because, you know, you can't deal with that on your own as a kid. Like, that's just... You can't deal with that on your own. Episode 3. Girls just want to have fun. Spike tells Emma she's dating her old schoolmate, Emma's teacher, Mr. Simpson. After Spike cancels a girls' night with Emma to be with him, Craig helps Emma and Manny crash the seniors' 80 dance. Meanwhile, Spinner and Jimmy find themselves competing against each other in the breakdancing contest for tickets to a Toronto Maple Leafs game, but do not fare well against the new kid, Marco. So, 
the big thing was a parent dating a teacher, and that can always be awkward for any kid if they find out that their parent is dating one of their teachers. So I'll put how they solved it here. Have you ever heard of knocking? Have you ever heard of manners? I'm not the one playing tonsil hockey on our front steps. What Archie and I do together is none of your business. And you are supposed to be at home, not dressed up like me at some dance. I'm not you, I'm Cindy Lauper. I don't care who you are, you were way out of line tonight. Me, out of line? What about you not telling me about Simpson? I did tell you. Yeah, when it was too late. Is it so wrong that I finally found someone I care about? Yes. Why? Because you've got me. M will always be the most important person in my life. Just because Snake and I are dating doesn't mean things between us are gonna change. It's not true, things are already changing. You and Manny. Manny? We both like this guy, we both thought he liked me. And he liked her. I felt like such an idiot. I'm sure she didn't plan it, Em. Neither did I. Nice work on the do. You did this every single day? Imagine. So are you gonna be okay with this, Simpson and me? I'm not sure. I think talking to your parent about how you feel about it is always the best option because you don't want them to think you're totally fine with it and then you're not. Like you need to let them know, hey, I feel weird about this and you also need to hear their side because they're your parents, they love you, they just, you know, they don't want you to feel uncomfortable. Okay, Karma Chameleon, episode four. With Terry by her side, Ashley attempts to make amends for her actions at her house party. She eventually earns the forgiveness of Paige and Hazel and apologizes to Jimmy for what happened between them. <clears throat> Jimmy is convinced they are back together, but when Sean comes calling, Ashley makes plans to go on a date with him. The news of the date soon spreads and Ashley is back where she started, only without Terry. Meanwhile, Toby becomes smitten with the new girl without realizing she's Spinner's sister. So... Wanting friends back. And... Hey, Paige. Okay, this is so not the time to talk to me. Just for a sec, please. What? You and I have been friends since grade two. That's like seven years, half our lives. Is this an apology or a math lesson? An apology. What I called you... I believe the word was hag. It was wrong. I was the real hag, and I'm sorry. You can show how she's apologizing to Paige. You can, um, that, that's what I showed you, is that she's apologizing to Paige. And that's a good thing to do when you feel like you've done something wrong, even if you don't know exactly what you could have done. You, you should apologize because you don't want to be fighting with your friend the entire time. Like, you don't want to be losing your friend or fighting with your friend because of this or that. Just, just so people don't, you know, just so you don't get yourself in a deeper thing. Even if you think they need to apologize, then you can tell them, hey, I may have done this and I'm sorry, but this also happened and I would like an apology. If they don't apologize to you, then maybe they weren't meant to be your friends in the first place. Five. Emma doesn't want people to know that Mr. Simpson is dating her mother as she helps to win first place at the science fair. Emma ultimately wins, but the joy is short-lived when Manny accidentally emails the entire class about the relationship, and a jealous Liberty tries to give its Emma to forfeit the trophy due to a judging bias on Mr. Simpson's part. 
Meanwhile, Spinner's having trouble controlling his erections and starts eating fruit after he begins getting more attention from the girls. Upset that he was able to get Ellie's phone number, Jimmy takes advantage of Spinner's problem in a humiliating way. So. It was the science fair. And a parent dating teacher, I kind of put those together. And there are two clips I'm going to show you. Mr. Simpson? I know what happened with Manny was unfortunate. Yeah, but it was a mistake. We're both sorry about it. Okay, fair enough. Anything else, Sam? So I don't get punished, just Manny? She sent the email. Yeah, but I told her about you and Mom. Well, there's nothing to hide, Emma. What, what's this all about? Kids are talking that I won the award because of favoritism. What? Well, it's true. When guys like you date single moms, they always try to bribe the kids. Guys like me. We need to discuss this later. No, we're going to discuss this now. Emma, class is about to start. I don't care. You're biased. Just admit it, Archie. Emma, you won the award on your own merits. <laughs> the runner-up, Liberty Van Sand, made a strong effort, but the judges thought it lacked flair. Yours was exciting and original. Original? Exciting? Of course that's what you're going to say. Because it's the truth. I'm not the only one who felt that way. Look at the judging sheets. Mr. Simpson, can I talk to you first? I was a bit of a freak today. You were concerned. Your mom and I have put you in an uncomfortable situation. No kidding. It would have been nice if you hadn't done it in front of my class. You know, I do care about your mother. No, it's not about that. It's about me and school and everyone thinking I'm your little pet. I promise I will treat you exactly the way I treat everyone else. That won't matter. People think what they want to think. <sighs> well, I don't know. Maybe we should transfer you out of my class. No. Or your mom and I should stop dating. I don't want that either. You know, I was proud of you today. The way you saved your project at the very last second was very, very cool. And very deserving of first place, okay? Okay. Thanks. Snake. No problem, Emmers. Archibald. Emelada. The snakester. But uh, the second one is what I'm going to talk about. Talking to Simpson, like Mr. Simpson, was definitely the way for Emma to go. Because, you know, if you don't talk to him about how you're feeling or what you think, it's not going to end well if you just explode at the worst possible moment. So I definitely think talking to the person is definitely the way to go if you think there may have been something. So six. Craig thinks Joey's request for him to move a car on his used car lot gives him free reign to drive and takes his friends on a joyride when Joey goes out of town for the weekend. Meanwhile, Ashley has found a friend in Ellie and considers getting her belly button pierced to impress her. First of all, never get a piercing to impress somebody. Only get a piercing if you want to. I got my nose pierced and I ended up being allergic to the jewelry, so it fell out. So... My friend's going to take me to another place that has more options, and then maybe it'll work. So six, underage driving. So I'll put the clip. Sit. You're not my dad. Sit. What you did was serious. You drove a car without a license. You, you could have killed somebody. I know. No, I don't think you do. If you were some punk off the street, I would have had you arrested and pressed charges. Craig, I trusted you. 
it, it, it was stupid. It was, it was so stupid. I admit it. And I'm, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. You're grounded. Three weeks. Three weeks? And one more thing. Wait, Kid Elric. What, what am I supposed to tell my friends? You should have thought of that before you took the car. And Joey talking to Craig about it, I definitely think that Joey was in the right to ground Craig and punish him because you should not drive when you're underage. Unless you have, you know, your permit. You should not drive when you're underage because that's dangerous. You don't know how the road works. Like, you don't know how everything goes. And the fact that the cops pulled up beside them was a great show of it's like they could have gotten in worse trouble. Episode 7. Paige meets Dean, a soccer player at rival school Bardell, and the two share an instant attraction. When she blows off Spinner to hang out with Dean, she finds herself in a situation even she can't handle. Meanwhile, JT and Toby's failure to keep their shared locker clean strains their friendship. And I'm going to read you episode 8 because... Two-parter. Paige struggles to come to terms with the recent sexual assault after Ashley writes a song about rape for PMS to perform on stage for a contest. The ensuing drama results in Paige finally breaking down and revealing the truth to Ashley. Meanwhile, Liberty acts out in an attempt to show JT she isn't as boring as he thinks she is. So, it's a rape two-parter. And I'm going to show you a clip in episode 8. He's here. Who? Him. I can't. It, it happens to other people. You say how sad. You say poor thing. But when it's you, it's something else. It's everything. She sings directly at Dean. I think that is amazing. I thought it was amazing when they made her sing directly at him to embarrass him. That was the best part of the episode, in my opinion. It was amazing. Okay, episode died. Tired of being known as the computer geek, Toby decides to join the wrestling team when he sees how popular Sean is. Determined to be accepted, Toby develops dangerous habits in order to lose weight, which concern both JT and Ashley. Meanwhile, Terry attempts to hide her job as a plus-size model from her friends when a classmate's fat-shaming comments make her want to quit. Spinner, Paige, and Hazel try to encourage Terry to continue. So... I had two, an eating disorder and fat shaming. Hey, you okay? Ash is on the phone with my dad. He's on his way. You're off the team, right? Armstrong chewed me out. She said I was playing with my life. Listen, Tobes, 
You can cry if you want, but I'm not giving you a hug. At least I gave everyone a good laugh. Hardly. Word got out, people freaked. Even Sean asked if you were okay. The whole school's worried. <laughs> I had a nice little chat with Kendra. She's like, oh, I hope he's okay, I'm so worried. <sighs> so, you still think you're invisible, Topes? Thanks. Hey, look who it is. It's the more of everything girl. Hey, you know what? I think you should join our sumo team. Seriously. Most girls on the planet look like this, so get used to it. No kidding. I made 500 bucks today as a plus size model. Yeah, plus size. What do you make, ice cream boy? Nice, Terry. <laughs> so the eating disorder, as you saw, got resolved by talking with JT, where he was like, you know what you did is stupid. And he was letting him know that people cared about him not just because he was on the wrestling team, but because they're his friends and they care about him. Um, and Terry telling off that Muhammad guy, it's the best. Uh, it was so great. Um, that was my favorite. Like, I really liked that the first time I had ever seen the season. I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. And, like, watching it again and again, it just, it's great. I love Terry so much. Okay, episode 10. After crushing on him for months, Manny finally decides to ask Craig out. The next day, each remembers the evening differently when recapping it for their friends. Manny tells Emma and Liberty that it was the best night of her life, while Craig tells Jimmy and Spinner that the evening was bizarre. Elsewhere, Ellie writes anonymous love notes to Marco, but he thinks they come from Hazel, who also has a crush on him. Ellie tries to be brave with her feelings, but her insecurities get in the way. So, dating someone younger is the main plot line I chose. And so I'll put the clip here. I was photography club. Fine. What happened to my locker? I thought it might cheer you up. I uh, hope I'm not interrupting. Um. You said you wanted to sign this? Yeah, this is the petition protesting GM Foods, right? GM Foods? Stands for genetically modified. Does that make them good? I'll see you later, Craig. I don't think you should talk to her anymore. Uh, she's in my class. So, what are we doing Friday night? You're moody again. Is it your locker? You don't like it? No, Manny. I'm sorry. But it's not my locker I don't like. It's you. Craig telling her off, I do admit there are other ways that you could solve the problem at first, as in you could just talk to them or try to say certain things. I don't agree with him just going straight to telling her off, but he was frustrated. So, um, yeah. yeah um, so yeah, uh, that's, that's what it is. It's like, I feel like he could have tried some other ways to tell her first instead of just jumping straight to that, but it did get the problem fixed, but I just felt like it was a little too harsh in my opinion. Um, 11. 
Hazel is the prime suspect when a Muslim girl she taunts is discriminated against on International Day, which forces her to come to terms with her own insecurities. Liberty and JT switch sewing projects and home economics to avoid embarrassment. So that is a hate crime. Now I'll put in the time code. Frieza, I know how hard it is to be Muslim, especially now. How? You're Jamaican, remember? My name, Aden. You said before it sounded Somalian. My name sounds Somalian because it is. That's what I am. I know. At my last school, something happened to me. I got I got cornered by these girls. One of them held me. The other hit me. Call me a terrorist. And you sure learned from them. I like how Hazel tells the story about what happened to her. I mean, it still didn't give the right for Hazel to do what she did, but I'm glad she opened up and told her the story. The girl brushed it off, which I understand because of what Hazel did, but it was good that Hazel decided to be that vulnerable and tell the story of what happened to her. 12 and 13. They're two the same. Like, they're a two-parter, so I'll read both of them. Emma and her mom's old friends prepare for Snake and Spike's wedding, but nothing seems to be going right at all. After finding out that Snake doesn't want to have children right away, she is later surprised to find out that she is pregnant and contemplates getting an abortion in order to salvage their relationship. Meanwhile, Emma is having the worst hair day ever and grows more upset when Manny invites Sean to the wedding when she had specifically said he wasn't someone to invite. Also, JT and Toby want to see the stripper at Mr. Simpson's bachelor party, which gets them both in a heap of trouble. So I chose the pregnancy and the wedding. So I'll show the two clips. I just found out yesterday. Then you should have come to me. I know. <laughs> You're from Emma <laughs> and an abortion. Do you really think I'd send Emma in the middle of the night to break the news to you? You know, sometimes it's like you and Emma are the couple, not you and me. She's my daughter. You can't expect that I'll just change our relationship. Of course not, but if this is going to work, then some things have to stay private. I don't like secrets, Snake. Neither do I, trust me. You sure you're not having doubts? Archie. This all happened pretty fast. We've known each other since junior high. Yeah, as friends. Maybe we're supposed to keep it that way. I just can't understand how it happened. You were there. I mean, you're on the pill. Yeah, which is 98% effective. So we're just in the unlucky 2%. Great. Some couples would think of this as a blessing. It's too bad you're against kids. I never said that. How about yesterday? You said you have too much on your plate. Well, yeah, I do. I've got a lot going on right now. I'm, I'm moving in. I'm going to be a husband and a stepdad. And I've got a lot. A lot of adjusting. I know. But life doesn't wait for you to get adjusted, Snake. It just happens. I mean, look at Emma. She couldn't have come at a worse time. But was it a mistake to have her? No. I wouldn't trade her for anything. You're right. You're absolutely right. It's hard to believe there's a little one growing in there. There is. She or he is going to be beautiful. So which one of us doesn't want to have this baby anyways? 
Um, and they're both of Spike and Stake talking it out, as you saw. Um, I do agree, you need to talk to somebody. If you find out you're pregnant and you don't know if they want kids yet or if they don't want kids right away, you still should talk about it. You don't want to make um, a choice and have it be regretted by someone who didn't even know that you were. So just make sure you talk to someone about it because having a baby and relationships and things like that are a two-way street. Like, it's two people working together. So, 14. Ellie wants more than just friendship with Marco, but when she can't seem to bring himself to be with her, she realizes why. Meanwhile, Toby wants to spend every second with Kendra, which makes her feel suffocated. So, struggling with sexuality. And I'll play the clip right here. Ellie, I like you, and, and I want to kiss you. Then kiss me. Am I doing something wrong? No, well, you're perfect. But you don't think I'm attractive. You're beautiful. That's not what I mean. Do you think I'm... hot? It's a simple question. <sighs> Do you like girls at all? Ellie, I want to. And I want you to so much. But if you can't, it's not fair to leave me hanging. Please. Please, would you tell me? Ellie, I don't know. Ellie. I'm just... I'm trying. I am. I'm just so... Confused. So, Marco talks with Ellie at Ashley's house when everybody thinks they're, you know, getting it on. So, Ellie wanted to talk with Marco, and she was like, Do you think I'm hot? And she wanted to, you know, have that talk with him. Um, this is an ongoing battle that we'll see throughout the season right now until he fully comes out. So, there will be a couple of things with this being the main storyline. There will be a couple of episodes, but that's how they solved this one, and I feel like it was a good way to have that talk with someone that you trust. Fifteen. JT earns two weeks' detention with Miss Hot Salakos, taking care of her pet guinea pigs. While doing his job, he develops a bond with her over the class's guinea pig, which leads to a crush. Meanwhile, Jimmy and Spinner agree to an all-honesty pact, but are soon but soon are at each other's throats. So, crush on a teacher was this one, and I'll put the time code. Salakos. Oh, good morning, JT. Okay, let's get started. Right this way. Are you always a science teacher? I mean, never a, a model? No. Teaching is my life, JT. And that's why what you did really hurt me. I'm sorry, okay? I really am. Uh, JT, your plan worked. Look. Hey! Close the door. Ah, all right. Yes. Good job. <laughs> and JT and Miss Hatzalakos are talking, and it was good for him to hear that you know, someone else, like, someone else, it's good to hear from the teacher that you have potential, but you're not putting it in the right place, and they just want you to succeed, that's what teachers are there for, they're there to teach you and for you to succeed, and they want you to, so when a teacher thinks you're not living up to their, to your full potential, 
they're going to be sad because they know you can do more. Um, under, okay, uh, 16, sorry. Jimmy and Shaw decide to bury the hatchet for the basketball team. Meanwhile, Emma and Sean are a couple again, but she later finds himself unable to handle the pressure at home and jeopardizes their relationship once again. Also, Jimmy hosts a party at his house and starts rekindling some old feelings with Ashley. So, underage drinking is the main thing. And I'll put the clip here. I don't feel good. I have to go home. Why do you even bother? What are you talking about? I'm just a big, stupid loser. My, my parents are drugs. My, my brother's out of work. Just a big, stupid loser like them. Yeah, so is that what you want me to say? Do you want me to call you a big, stupid loser, Sean? Is that what you want? Who are you calling? My mom. What? No, hang up. Mom? You know you said if I ever needed, you pick me up, no questions asked? Great. We're outside Jimmy's. Sean! Sean, why are you doing this? Because I screwed up, all right, Emma? One. Everybody screws up one. Emma, homeroom is about to start. I know, but this is more important to stop. Things are always gonna be like this. Like what? Me screwing up, it's in my blood. It's in your head, and that's all. Your mom and Simpson aren't gonna be as forgiving. Did my mom give you the third degree? No. I mean, if she has to drive you home drunk a second time, it might be a different story. You don't have to worry about that, all right? The tracker gave me a lecture and I just don't... Okay, but this isn't about Tracker or your parents or my parents. This is about you and me. Sean, I like you. Thank you, too. And Emma and Sean talk about it which is definitely the way to go. You gotta talk to your significant other if they're like drinking and you don't like it. You gotta be like, hey, I know you like drinking, but I'm not entirely comfortable with it. And then you guys gotta find a middle ground. If this person wants to drink, you gotta be like, okay, but this, this, and this, like you gotta find a middle ground. Compromise is important in relationships. Episode 17. Liberty doesn't make the girls floor hockey team, but gets to be team manager. While doing this job, she pushes her friends away due to her bossy attitude. Meanwhile, Paige uses Terry to her advantage after Terry misinterprets the palm reading she did on her. So being bossy. And I'll put the time here. Having fun? Yes, yeah, so much. Sorry we didn't win. You almost won. Losing by one point sucks, but impressive. Thanks. Not impressive enough to get Joey's uniforms, of course. I don't know about that. Girls? <laughs> Mr. Jeremiah said he hadn't seen such a great battle of the sexes since Billie Jean King beat Bobby Riggs. <laughs> Whoever they are. <laughs> I don't understand. Joey's sponsoring both teams. We impressed him that much. <sighs> wow, you girls look incredible. You mean we? Look incredible. <sighs> Try it on. <sighs> it's perfect. But they talked it out with Liberty, which definitely, if one of your friends is being like really really bossy and you really don't like it you got to talk it out with your friend you can't just be like oh that's my friend no if you don't like that your friend is being this bossy towards you you need to talk it out with them that's something that you need to talk to your friends about um 
episode 18. Ashley's relationship with Jimmy seems to be back on track until he says he preferred her old look to her new goth one. Meanwhile, after sex ed lecture, JG convinces Toby to buy condoms in order to have sex with Kendra, something to which both Kendra and Spinner object. And Toby objected too. Anyway. So trying to change someone. I'll put the time code here. Hey. Hey. I signed it like you asked. We cling to one another. A storm raging around. My head slips under the water. You can't hear me cry. So I let go. Drift away. Leave your comfort behind. Save us. Always, Ashley. So, Ashley decides to write Jimmy a note breaking up with him because he doesn't, you know, agree with her new image. And I'm of the... I mean, when I start dating someone, I say I look for personality, not looks. So this kind of episode kind of irks me because it's like you should like that person for their personality, not not their looks. Their looks shouldn't even matter. It should be for personality, but I seem to be the only one that thinks that. Episode 19. Mr. Radich's dismissal of, dismiss, dismissal of Emma's protests against genetically modified food in the cafeteria inadvertently leads to a food fight. Given the chance to apologize, she stands firm and finds herself suspended. Meanwhile, Spinner is frustrated when he can't afford to do what Jimmy does, buy whatever he wants. His method of getting the money to do so causes Jimmy to end their friendship. So, protesting GM foods. I'll put the clip here. Fellow students, staff, and faculty, I've been asked here this morning to apologize to you and to Mr. Radich. But I can't. I can't apologize for wanting to be heard. I'm sorry the food fight happened and for making a mess in Sheila's cafeteria, but other than that, I feel I did nothing wrong yesterday. You can agree or disagree with me about GM foods, that's not the point. The point is, I have a right to express my opinion, and you have a right to be informed. If fighting for that will get me a week's suspension, then I can live with that. I like how instead of apologizing, Emma stood up for herself. I feel like she shouldn't have apologized. She just wanted to do something in her Emma way that wanted to make the school better. She doesn't always go about it the right way. Every character in the show is flawed. But she went about it in the way that she thought she could. And I like how she didn't apologize. She just stood up for herself because that's a badass woman move. Anyway. Episode 20. Paige is finally coming to terms with her rape, just as Dean and the Bardell team return to Degrassi for a basketball game. She tries to be strong, but Dean's taunts about raping her cause Paige to distance herself from the spirit squad before the big game. Meanwhile, Ellie and Marco film a commercial for Snake's class, but argue over what the style should be. So. Facing rapist. And I'll put the times here. Oh, fearless leader. Go away. Paige, you say that all the time, but we both know you don't mean it. Yeah, well, this time I do. Paige, the squad needs you. Leave me alone. It's just some stupid guy, right? You mean Dean? Bardell's resident sports hero and... and rapist? Yeah, he raped me, and no one in the world seems to be able to do anything about it. JT!
you, Mr. Rapus. And the mascot is going to the principal's office now. Paige, what's going on? Nothing. JT in the mascot outfit attacking Dean, that's not nothing. Paige, just. Spin, could you please? Something happened to you. I just got what I asked for, right? He took it too far, like Hazel said, right? Didn't he? Hey! Hey! You're not going anywhere! Your mascot came at me. You think that's what this is? Spinner, stop! What? He deserves it! Spinner, please! Water boy, your boyfriend? I have one thing to say to you, Dean. Get ready, because I am coming after you this time, not like Spinner or the mascot. For real. But I like how JT, Spinner, and Paige all solve the problem. Like, they all come together and they all go after Dean. And I really like how she had people standing up for her and she decided to stand up to him. That was amazing. And I loved it. 21. Craig's dad returns to his life and Craig doesn't know if he could deal with his dad's pressure to move back home. But when the unspeakable happens, that might not be a choice. Meanwhile, JT agrees to be Liberty's date to the dance, but only if she tutors him. So this is a two-parter, but this first part, I'll show you the clip where um, Craig's talking to Joey and finds out what happened. It's death of a parent, but he talks to Joey and finds out what happened, and I, he's like in shock. Like, he doesn't really believe it. I don't know if it... He doesn't want to believe it, or he doesn't, but, you know. And then the second part. When his father dies, Craig seems happy, especially with the year-end dance coming up. However, he finds out getting over it is harder than he thought. After making a scene at the dance, Craig disappears into the halls where Terry consoles him. Meanwhile, Paige and Spinner run for Luau, King and Queen, but Jimmy convinces Hazel to join him and go against them out of spite. So, then it's the aftermath. I'll show you a clip. What's wrong with me? Nothing. You're angry and you're sad. This was supposed to be my night. I'm with Ash, we're the stupid luau, king and queen. When my mom died, I was at my friend's birthday party. I was having a great time. And then my dad came to tell me. At the party? Yeah. I was so mad. Because she died? No. Because I couldn't play pin the tail on the donkey. That's a fun game when you're a little kid. Exactly. It wasn't until later that it hit, that, that she was dead. Before my dad died, I 
wanted him gone. <sighs> so why am I crying now that he is? Because you love him. And then him talking to Terry about losing a parent, I think that was the best way because not only does Terry not get a lot of chances to help someone solve their problem, but she knows firsthand how hard it is. Okay, so here are the relationships. Snake and Spike. I always wanted them together since Degrassi High days. I literally was so happy when they had them get married in the next generation. It just made my little heart so happy. And I was so glad. Sean and Emma. You know me. I'm a big semi shipper. I think they're the most adorable thing ever. And I really think they complement each other well. And they should have gotten married, but okay. Ashley and Jimmy. I didn't really like Ashley and Jimmy the second time around. Like, I didn't really like them the first time around. I just think that they were in different points and they weren't well suited for each other. And I think that they shouldn't have gotten back together this season. Definitely not. It wasn't right. Paige and Spinner. I'm not sure how I feel about Paige and Spinner. I think I like them when Paige calms down a little bit. When they get farther into the relationship and she calms down a little bit. I think I like them at that point. But at this point, I didn't really like them. Ashley and Craig. So, they haven't really started dating yet, but they went to the dance together, so I added it. Um, Ashley and Craig. Um, there. Ashley and Craig I don't like at all. I was trying to think of a way to say it. I don't like them at all. Like, I just think they're not well suited for each other at all. And I, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't think it's good for either of them. I'm, I don't, I don't. Um... But anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It helps. Um, let me know what you think down in the comments below. But again, be respectful in the comments. So if you agree or disagree, let me know why. And I will see you guys in maybe an exposed video next week. Bye.